Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Frederick and Jean Watts, and this is Love in 60 Seconds. Hey, I'm trying to figure out how to put us on uh, Instagram because I don't know how to work your phone. <laughs> so. so tonight, we're going to continue our, our talking about uh, damaged goods. And uh, we hope that you guys uh, were able to tune in and uh, enjoy us in our last conversation. We thought we had a pretty good talk about marriage and in relationships and how to deal with things um, in damaged goods when areas of your life are damaged. <clears throat> so we just wanted to continue this uh, talk about it and sort of do part two. Uh, there are some issues and questions that people had uh, concerning what we talked about last time. So we just wanted to continue the conversation. So definitely uh, like, chat, love, and, and interact with us. Uh, tonight as we go into this this area you know and basically what we're talking about is continuing the story of uh, Ms. Mephibosheth yes I yeah, finally said it and um, how he dealt with areas in his life that were damaged mm -hmm. and what he did and and tonight we just want to talk to you about some of those things maybe recap a little bit but also how to deal with things when our life happens Absolutely. So um, basically, we're talking about damaged goods and um, how many of us, we go into relationships, we go into marriage um, with damaged goods. Our, our life has uh, had some issues. We've had some bumps and bruises. And then sometimes we go into marriage and then we experience becoming damaged goods within that marriage, within that union. So we want to talk about um, those things. And then we want to talk about how to do damage control. Okay. Yeah, well, I guess, you know, um, how do you deal with those areas when life happens? Uh, well, yeah. And, and, and those damaged areas, you know, what are some of the solutions? Well, well, let's go back and talk about what damage good is. It's whatever happened to you in your prior, in your sprint to marriage or in your marriage. Um, and that damaged goods are not, um, when you become damaged or damage is not something that is uh, expected. Or anticipated. So, like, if they're making some, sending me my next um, Gucci loved purse, <laughs> I'm putting it in the atmosphere. But anyway, when they're putting that and they're getting ready to box it up, they're not uh, shipping it out to the stores or they're not shipping it out even to me um, with the intent that it's going to be damaged. When it gets to me, something happened along the way that makes it damaged. Mm -hmm. And that's the same with us. When God creates us, he creates us perfect without issues, without things. When we're born, we don't have issues. We don't have things going on. But what ends up happening is something along the way happens to us. Right. And then that makes us become damaged. Mm -hmm. So so what do you do mm -hmm. in those areas? You know, and a lot of times people have been damaged for so long, like mm -hmm. we discussed and talked about, that it's normal. And sometimes when you're 50 years old, you're dealing with something that damaged you at five years old. You know, so how do you deal with those areas? How do you make that thing right? What do you have to do? And I think we might have, we have some solutions for you in, in that, mm -hmm. in dealing with those damaged areas. Hey, Shelly, hey, uh, Prophet Trumbo, Sister Trumbo, God bless you. God bless you. Everybody that's watching uh, hey on uh, Instagram. So let's talk about that. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. So, um... Things that can create, first of all, I want to talk about that, I guess. Things that can create uh, within a relationship, damaged goods. Things that can create. Uh, one of the things that can create damaged goods is covetousness. And uh, when I said, when we were talking about what we are going to talk, talk about, I was like, can you say it in layman's terms? Because nobody's going to know what covetousness is. Uh, well, covetousness is, uh, the Bible talks about it, and it's basically... Okay, you know, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments in um, Exodus 20, and uh, actually verse 17 specifically talks about thou shalt not covet. Mm -hmm. um, but every other commandment that was given dealt with the external action. Um, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not uh, bear false witness. These are things that must be done outside. These are actions that had to be taken that you were not allowed to do according to the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. But covetedness covetousness was something that dealt with the heart. It was something that was inward. It was something that was uh, inside that you couldn't uh, necessarily see happening, hmm. but it was very, very instrumental in um, God um, saying, hey, that's not cool. Let's not do that. 
Um, so that was something that was happening on the inside. So covetousness, and actually in Deuteronomy 5 and 21, it says, Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thy, thy neighbor's wife or field, or etc., uh, in anything that belongs to your neighbor, basically. And thou shalt not desire or lust after. That's what covetousness means. Lusting after or desire or thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. Looking at somebody else's uh, whatever and saying, that's what I want. Now, that's different from admiring. Admiring is one thing, but coveting is saying, I want it for myself. I want to have that specific thing for myself. It also, it, covetousness actually goes hand in hand with jealousy. And we all know that jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're being covetous, um, wanting something or looking at something. And it could be like, I want, you know, to have that kind of job or that kind of money or that kind of, and you want that particular person's thing that particular person's wife, that particular person, or even if they may not be somebody's wife or just that other woman thinking, oh, I think that she's better than what I've got. And it's the 80-20 thing, meaning that you got 80% at home. You've already got 80% in your own relationship, but you are looking, sorry guys, looking for the 20%. Right. And uh, you sometimes exchange that 80%, you exchange, sorry, exchange the 80% for um, the 20%. And um, then when you get the 20%, you find out that you only got 20 and you <laughs> lost your 80 and then you are in a bad situation. All right, while well, you fix that. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's important. It's just simple math. You know, why, why put something that you've invested time in that you have that's almost where God wants it to be for something that <clears throat> is a trick of the enemy or is a distraction? And a lot of times when we're talking about areas in our lives that are damaged, uh, we're talking about those areas where, you know, life happens, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's plenty of times where sometimes when those damaged areas are because you're damaged, a situation life brings you, you might not want to pray it out. <laughs> you might right. want to fight it out. You right. might want to cuss it out. But, you know, one thing is that, you know, <clears throat> how do you practically deal with that? And like we said last week, and please go back and watch that uh, uh, damaged goods part one and so we won't have to you know recap about Mephibosheth, uh, Mephibosheth. Mm -hmm. we're going to start calling him Chef from now on because um, but what happened with him in those damaged areas is that you know don't forget that God is going to do his best work mm -hmm. with damaged things damaged pieces damaged areas because he is a potter he wants to put things back together again and, and do that but a lot of times in our lives that we just you know um, we don't want to give them everything. We Sorry. don't want to deal with certain areas in our life. But, you know, God looks past our faults because he knows what we need. So he looks into our needs. Mm -hmm. So when we're dealing with these areas that are damaged, you first have to make sure that you're like, you know, hey, I'm honest. I'm, I'm going to need you to meet me where I'm at. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because God will never bless you where you pretend to be. He don't bless he don't bless your Facebook picture. He don't bless your Instagram photo. He don't bless your Instagram story. Mm -hmm. He blesses where you actually are. Because sometimes that Instagram story, that Facebook story, whatever, is not really where you are. It's right. not really who you are. It's not really an accurate representation of where you are. So God's gonna bless your truth. He's not gonna bless your uh facade. He's not gonna bless your embellishment. Right. He's not gonna brush, hey Crystal Brown, love you girl. He's not going to bless um, those uh, kinds of things that you are uh, pretending to be. Um, and, with, and with the when you're talking about covetousness, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, a lot of times when you're dealing with those areas is that uh, the person that is looking at that one thing, don't ever treat your spouse as your enemy. Right. You know, your spouse should be your asset. That should be the thing that you admire most. Mm -hmm. So if you were you're having to look other places is because you don't value the asset that God is giving you, which is your spouse, Absolutely. you know, which is the best thing that God has for you. And that's when you start looking and say, Oh, the grass is greener and all that it might be better over there. But when you really need to do is take a say, wait, wait a minute, God gave me this blessing and this asset that I have to cultivate, that I have to work on, that I have to make into the thing, which is our marriage, mm -hmm. this lifelong journey that God wants us to be, to be better, to be focused, to be one accord. So mm -hmm. don't don't look at your spouse, don't look at your situation as an enemy. But if you start looking at your marriage as an asset, something that you invest in, mm -hmm. something that you put 
put time in, put something that you put love into, then you don't have to worry about looking at what's on the other side. Absolutely, because at the end of the day, you don't have the grace to maintain what God has given someone else. God has given someone else this particular thing. Um, God has given someone else this particular blessing. He's given someone this particular wife or this particular husband. You don't have the grace to maintain that. And the Bible proves that in that story about Mephibosheth. And if you go and you read the story, but part of the story, and, and we actually, uh, you know, we're going to kind of talk about it here and there. But um, part of the story that I like is is really at the end of it when uh, Ziba, when we talk, we'll talk about it. But Mephibosheth, he was... Um, part of Saul's house. He was like Saul's grandson. And uh, they were trying to get out of the, the house because it was under attack and all of that. And uh, the nurse was carrying him, drop him, and he was laying in his feet. And um, what ended up happening was that um, he, um, uh, you know, grew up and then David was saying, who in Saul was left in Saul's house that I can bless? And then Ziba was like, well, you know, there's this Mephibosheth down there, but he laying in his feet immediately. Right. Ha I'm hating immediately. Right. Now, uh, Ziba was already a part of Saul's house. So he knew who he was. He knew all about him, but he was just going ahead with hate, hate, starting out with hate. And he said, you know, yeah. And so uh, long story short, you know, David, when he got him, and um, he sat at me first, you know, Mephibosheth was like, oh my gosh, he was like, they're going to kill me. He bowed down to the king. He was like, no, I'm putting you at the king's table. So he put him at the king's table and we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, at the end of all of that, there was a situation where, or uh, David's uh, son, uh, Jonathan was coming back to, I mean, uh, David's son um, was coming back to try to kill uh, David to take over the, the kingdom. And so they fled, but uh, Ziba told a lie on Mephibosheth and was like, yeah, you know, he really didn't want to, want, he thinks he's going to be back king now because he's Saul's person. And he ended up, David said, okay, he said, well, you, I'm going to give you all the land that I gave to Mephibosheth because he really was supposed to be a servant. He said, but I'm going to give you all the land. Well, he gave him all the land, but because he got it unrightfully, he got it by trickery. He got it because he was a liar. He was not able to maintain it because he didn't have the grace to maintain it because he did not get it lawfully. So somebody getting somebody else's husband, somebody else's wife, or somebody else's money, somebody else's position, even on your job, somebody jockeying for something, brown nose and being all extra and doing something and getting it unlawfully. You don't have to worry about that because there is justice that's coming that right. way. And God, when you're looking at other people's stuff, the reason you don't have what other people have is because God has what he wants you to have. Mm -hmm. And if you have somebody else's, somebody else's spouse, somebody else's job, you don't have the grace to maintain somebody else's stuff. That's right. So that's why you don't have to worry about looking at what the Joneses have or, or what anybody else has. Because if you get that, you can't maintain it. And, you know, even I was thinking about, you know, let's talk about relationships just even a little bit more. What happens? Now, Mephibosheth was not lame. He was not born no. that way. No. He was not born. So how do you deal with it when a person that's supposed to care for you drops you? Right. And lames you, you know. Yeah, he didn't come out damaged. No, he, he was didn't. damaged because somebody that cared for him, somebody that loved him, damaged him. Jeez, that's powerful. Da damaged him, that hurt him, broke him, and, and broke him, and broke him. And so now, so there's some of us that dealt with issues in our lives where it wasn't our fault, and but we've been carrying that. And Mephibosheth dealt with that his whole life. And he actually went into a place of hiding in a place where he was trying to deal with that damaged area. And a lot of times what we and, uh, about that story that I, I really am really liking the story the more that I study it is that, you know what, when we get in those areas that are damaged, even though that it's not our fault or even though those issues don't get so used to it that it just is a custom. You know, it makes you, because you, you never dealt with it. That's why people can speak in tongues, mm -hmm. prophesy, and be mean as the devil. Wow. Because they had some area in their life that was damaged. Some area in their life that was messed up, that was never addressed. And they went to a place where, the place where he hid was, uh, what was it called? L uh, Lodabah. Lodabah. That means a place of desolate, a place of hiding, a place of basically uh, not dealing with your situations. So even talking about that, there are areas, if you get in a Lodabah area where you're not dealing with the damaged area, then you're going to take that out on your spouse. You're going to take it out on us because you never dealt with that. Mm 
Mm -hmm. You never dealt with the area that hurts you. So, you know, it's not an excuse to say, you know what? Oh, man, you know, so-and-so did this to me. My uncle did this to me. My father did this to me. I had a generational curse or, or whatever. If you don't ever deal with those damaged areas, you can never move into the place that God wants you to be. Absolutely. And again, you know, not only that, you want to make sure that you are appreciating uh, what God has given you. Mm -hmm. Um, appreciate what God has given you, your measure, your portion for this life. Appreciate what God has given you because that keeps you from becoming um, damaged. That keeps you from having damage in your own uh, in relationship and in your own life. Uh, and now we're talking about Mephibosheth and one of the parts that I wanted to talk about it, I, I mentioned it um, a little bit and it's um, he, at, when he, when David brought him to the table, the part of him that was lame, the part of him that was broken, the part of him that was hurt, it was covered. Mm -hmm. He looked like everybody else. Everybody else was cool. That part was covered. His his brokenness in his feet and in his, his ankles, that was covered. Right. And at the king's table, your hurt, your damaged part, your damaged goods, they are covered. Mm -hmm. And they're covered instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Healing a lot of times is a process. If you've been damaged, if you've been hurt, sometimes it's a process. It takes, like you mentioned, Praying through it, mm -hmm. getting through it. And it takes day to day and day after day to get through it. But this time, when he came to the table of the king, he was immediately covered. His brokerage, his damaged area was immediately covered. Covered, but still damaged. He was covered, but still damaged. Because he's in the presence of the king. But he's in the presence of the king. That's good. Absolutely. That's good. You know, a, a lot of times when you think about those areas, um, because damaged areas take time to heal. And, and a lot of times we, um, and then you have to know that the enemy knows that just as well. And if you don't let those areas heal, that's more than likely the areas that he's going to attack again, because that's the area where you are weakest in, you know, and what happens is that we challenge you to know that God has a purpose for your life. You yeah. know, there is a, there is a, a blessing for you. God knew that, you know, before you were formed, he called you. He knew what he wanted for you. But a lot of times we listen to the hand of the, the trick of the enemy to yes. say, you know what? Um, I can't be free when God wants you to be free. You know, but God can only bless you where you are mm -hmm. and not where you pretend to be, like you said. And I, I like referencing that like as a GPS and not getting off. When you put in your GPS, it asks you for your present position. That's right. Right? Your present position and where you want to go. And a lot of times when we deal with damaged areas, we might say, you know what, if I'm a liar or a cheater or if I'm, a, you know, having a homosexual thoughts or tendencies or if I can't deal with issues, you need to stay right there. Mm -hmm. You need to be that liar. You need to be that cheater. You need to be and be honest in God because that's your present position. That's right. Once you acknowledge and let God come into your present position as a damage then you're able to be like, all right, now let's go to let's go to uh, Forgiveness Avenue. Let's go to, to Deliverance Boulevard. Yeah. You know, let's go to those areas. So let God take direct you there, you. direct yes. you there. You know, but a lot of times we don't deal with the damages because we don't be honest with God. Right. And I think we're going to talk about that. You know, there's only one way that you can really be honest with God, and that's through prayer. Absolutely. Right? So absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you definitely want to be honest with God and, and, and the way that you stay covered because he, he's able to cover those mistakes. He's able to cover those horrible things that happen in your life, those horrible things that happen to you, the horrible things that um, you have to deal with. He's able to cover that. But again, he only blesses where you are. Mm -hmm. He cannot bless where you pretend to be. Mm -hmm. And if you pretend that you are not broken, you pretend that you do not have an issue, you know you um, you know you lie constantly. You know you keep running back over your mama's house. You know you keep you know looking at other women. You know you keep doing things that you're not supposed to do. And you will consistently try to act like you don't do that. You cannot do that. Uh, what is that? Uh, uh, I think it was he man, an um, old, uh, old cartoon that used to come over and he would be like, knowing is half the battle. Right. Knowing is half the battle. Right. And you know, uh, even Alcoholic Anonymous, they tell you once you, the first step is admitting. <laughs> admitting right. and knowing the truth. Right. And if you admit and know the truth, then God can deal with you in your truth. If you if you try to get directions from the east side and you really on the west side, your GPS is not going to lead you the right way because you're not even able to connect with the right streets. 
So uh, you have to be consistently and consistently give that place to God. You have to consistently give that hurt, consistently give that um, truth to God. Because if you don't give that truth to God, then you cannot be truthful to your spouse. You cannot be in intimacy with your spouse. And that spouse will always, even if it, it seems like everything is good, they'll always question you. If you're not open and honest, they'll always question you. They'll always, in the, even if they never say anything in the back of their mind, that intimacy will never be gained because they'll always question you. And when you're in the presence of the king, um, you have to conti continually bring your, your damaged place to him and yield that place to him. And again, like we said, when Mephibosheth sat at the table, he was instantly covered. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it will take, you know, you have to take time to com just completely yield yourself to God. And just like I, I was laughing because like even now, you know, we have a presentation mm -hmm. of us sitting at the table or sitting at, but my areas are covered because I got shorts on. Right, and <laughs> you I got to right. see through sweatpants. You can't, you can't see that, <laughs> but you can only see what is presented because right. we, where we're sitting. That's we're right. in the table. And, and one thing about uh, this story that I like so much is that obviously the story is David um, as the king is reference to what God has for us. And you know, Absolutely. when you think about, he called for Mephibosheth. He called for Chef. Mm -hmm. All right. So he was like, who is left of Saul's house that I can bless? You know? And so that's the same thing that God is saying to us. I formed you. I know what I have for you. I called you. I knew who you are. I knew your purpose. So no matter that your marriage is messed up now, no matter that you have had some damaged areas, no matter that you have experienced hurt, pain, past false past relationships, things have not gone right. I've called you. I'm calling you now and I'm saying I'm looking for you. I'm fulfilling you. I want to fulfill you. And that's the thing that we love about our relationship with the Father. He does not want to harm you. He wants to bless you. He wants Absolutely. to fulfill you. And I'm going to talk about just a little bit later what happened when Chef got in the presence of the king. Mm -hmm. Because if we really think about these damaged areas, there's some certain things that we have to do so that we aren't damaged and that we get undamaged. But God is faithful when we are not faithful to even, even to ourselves. Absolutely. And when you get into the presence of the king, the king can bless you. He can't bless you outside of his presence. You have to get into his presence. Absolutely. And when he blesses you, his desire and God's desire is to bless you and not punish you. And sometimes when we deal with certain sins, certain areas, certain failures, we tend to do the thing that will harm us the most and run from God. When we need to get into his presence, because when you get into his presence and you start talking real, you start saying, Lord, hey, today life is just horrible. I cannot make it. I need you. I, I God, this it sucks. Mm -hmm. When you start being real and start being in the presence, then God can bless you. And and our pastor, our bishop yesterday talked about worship. Mm -hmm. And now it started about how important it is to worship. Because worship is in the presence. Praise, you know, anybody can praise, the rocks can praise, everybody can praise. But when you worship, you are now in the presence mm -hmm. of the king. And when you are in his presence, that's when he can deal with your damaged goods. Absolutely. And your damaged areas. So, because the, the Bible says, come boldly before the throne. Come boldly into his presence and bring your damages to the kings, Roman, uh, to, to the king. Because Roman 8 and 28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good that to them that love God. So every situation, dealing with adultery, dealing with financial situations and marriages, dealing with hurt, pain, dealing with all kinds of abuse, all those things that the enemy has, the Bible says that all things work together for the good. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is what? Love is God. love God. And you are called according, and to, according his to his purpose. So there all these damaged areas that we have, because we all have them, we need to bring them and 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 look at the story here of, a, of Chef, of how he brought the areas, how he was covered by grace, how he went back to being damaged again, and then the final outcome. Absolutely. And, um, you know, talking about that, um, you know, one of the things that you have to consider when you have been uh, damaged in a specific area and I want to make sure that we're talking about like, you know, if you failed in a certain area or you failed at picking the right um, person, you might not even be married yet or you were married at some point and you want to get married again and um, certain things that you didn't quantify before you got married. Um, I had a one uh, lady, you know, that was talking and she was really like 
running her husband down, really running him down. And I had talked about this before. And I was like, you know, and somebody else had mentioned it to me. I said, you know what? God's going to hold her accountable. I don't care what he did. He's going to hold her accountable on the things that came out of her mouth and what she said, regardless of if he was wrong or not, you know, he's going to hold her accountable for those things because, you know, you have to, um, you know, have accountability and you have to, uh, you have to, you have a responsibility to even cover, but you have to also have accountability when you've made bad choices or when things have happened and you've done bad things, you know, that you have to be accountable. If you're a consistent liar, you need to have some, somebody that you can be accountable to and say, Hey, you know what? I'm falling back into this fabrication type of situation. I'm just making up stuff. You know what I'm saying? You got to tell someone, pray with me. You know what I'm saying? And it may seem comical. It may seem like, Oh my gosh, you need to do that. You know what I'm saying? If you, especially, you know, if you've, uh, you've stepped out on your spouse and you guys are trying to come back together, um, you're trying to heal from that. You need accountability. You need to have a girlfriend that you can call and be like, um, you know what? I was feeling like, you know, emptiness at home and I was kind of going, uh, to look for that in another place. I was going to look for that, um, um, satisfaction in another place outside of my marriage again. And I really need prayer concerning that, or I need somebody, you know, somebody that can check you and say, right. you know what I mean? And accountability is not somebody that's assigned to you. It's somebody that you seek out and that you know that you can trust and that you say, Hey, I need you to, you know, be in agreement with me on this, uh, or whatever the situation is. I mean, no, 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 no I'm that's just, good. No, it, it's definitely, that's part of, of, of the damaged areas, having accountability, but also being able to know, you know, what God's relationship for you and in, in, in your life is. He is the potter. And if you think about um, a potter, when we use that reference, it's a masterpiece creator. Mm -hmm. But it's master, which is God, and peace, which is you. Mm -hmm. If you don't give him the areas of your life that are broken and damaged, he's not going to work. He, he, even though he's God Almighty, he does not pull it from you. you got to give it to him. Right. So if you're broken and you're damaged and you have areas and relationships and in your marriage, you got to be honest and say, you know what? I got to give you this. I got to give you this lust. I got to give you this, this adultery. I have to give you this financial problems. I have to give you the hurt from this past abuse. I got to give you this mistrust. And so once you do that, then God can start working with you. He can start putting stuff together again. He can start making you whole again because, you know, all that frustration, all that lust, all that fear, all those things, they if you give it to him, what does God do? He gives you beauty for ashes, right? right? And he says, I can fix that. I can fix that. I can work with that. I can work with you being an adulterer. I can work with you being a liar. I can do because all things work. That's right. You can all work things. Can I can work, work all things. Can I can work, work each and everything, work every situation. But you got to give it to him. You have to be honest. You have to give him that part because even though he, he can speak it, you know, into existence with our relationship, he has to mold it. He's yeah. a gentleman. Yeah. He's not yeah. going, he's not going to bust yeah. up on you. Yeah. He's going to, you got to, the Holy Spirit is not going to bust up on you and be like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take over your life. Mm -hmm. No, you have to yield your life to yeah. him. You have to yield your life and give it to him. And he realizes that we are no good on our own. Mm -hmm. He realizes that we're no good. He, again, that's the first thing that after God created all the stuff he created, he said, everything was good except for man being alone. He said, that's not good. That's and so good. that's why everything is impaired. Even when, when Noah was on the ark, two by two, mm -hmm. it was in pairs. Yeah. He gives you, you know, you got to have an accountability person, but your, your, your spouse is your part of your team. Right. You have got to have somebody that you are completely transparent to transparent. somebody, somebody that you're completely transparent to. And you know, somebody that's not going to break your bro code or whatever the case is. You got to have somebody that's complete because even, you know, the disciples were sent out two by two. Yeah, yeah. Everything, two, it, it's, it's in pairs. Um, you know, the Bible says, confess our faults one to another. Um, uh, let us uh, reason, come now, let us reason together. Everything is done together. Everything is done with someone. It's, you're not an island and you're not like, okay, these things I'm not going to share with anyone because you cannot progress. You cannot be blessed. You cannot. Right. Like we talked about in past uh blocks is that you know the the devil tries to isolate you mm -hmm. so if you think you're alone if you think you're only doing it you're the only one that's experienced it that's how he starts talking to you that's how he starts winning because he's isolating you but just know that every setup or that every setback that you think of your experience is really an opportunity for god to set you up for something greater so <clears throat> so don't be so proud and don't be so um boisterous that you can't let god do what he needs to do to fix these damaged areas 
And I think there's two ways that really show basically how to get back into this. And if you have not read the story of Chef, you know, mm-hmm. it's in the second Samuel. I think it starts in, in uh, chapter four. It's a it's a story that really talks almost, in my opinion, how today in 2018 a relationship is with God. Mm-hmm. You have damaged areas. You run to him. He calls you that no matter what the world says, because the world describes you like Ziba does, mm-hmm. describes you by you're a liar. You're, everything's you're wrong all with you. everything's wrong with you. All your past sins, okay. everything that is done. But God doesn't see all that. The first thing that he wants to do is get you into his presence so he can bless you. Absolutely. And, and then when when sometimes you don't know who you are because you were in that place of a. Um, what do you call it? Lodibah. Lodibah, which means a place of nothingness or uh, when your marriage is nothing or that you don't know you're in this place, you got to come out of it. And I think a lot of times we don't come out of it or we even, you know, to be honest, you do come out of it. But what happened to a chef was that because he came out of it, but Lodabal didn't come out of him. It didn't come out of he him. He ended up being damaged again. Absolutely. And had to deal, again. yeah, because you came out of the situation, but the situation never came out of you. So, you know, I, my wife has some more points, but there are some some ways to deal with making sure that you get the whole goods, all the damaged areas healed. Absolutely. In your life. Yeah, you want to have uh, damage control. You know, damage we want to have damage control. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, making sure that. Um, you are doing damage control, like, you know, uh, for example, somebody used an example about damage control, um, you know, what to say to your wife if she asks you how this outfit look on her. <laughs> damage control, oh, honey, you look amazing. You look uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, you already going back, you know, especially if you offended her earlier on, uh, you going back and you doing damage control, making sure that everything is good. Um, but, you know, you Damage control is, first of all, again, as we said before, you know, it's it's consistently submitting those damaged places, those hurt places, those broken places to the Lord, um, you know, to God um, and uh, surrendering them also, you know, um, in a safe environment to your spouse. You know what I'm saying? Being communicating, letting that spouse know, um, you know, these things happen, but this is not like, you know, whining and keep bringing it up. It's saying, hey, this is what happened you know, I'm working through this. I'm going through this. Um, also, uh, being realistic about the areas of damage. Um, don't put yourself in an um, unrealistic area, an unrealistic scenario. Um, you know, because if you do that and you're not really paying attention, it can happen again. Whatever you've been through, whatever you, mm-hmm. whatever you've done to dam- be damaged, if you're the damager or uh you've been damaged where the enemies tricked you in a certain way. If you're not careful, if you're not prayerful, if you're not watching, it can happen again. It can happen again to you. So you got to make sure that you're being realistic about, okay, you know, if you, you know, know that you, you know, are alcoholic, it's not really a great idea to just hang out at the bar. It's not a good idea to become a bartender. You know what I'm saying? That's You don't want to put yourself in that type of environment because you're not being realistic about what you can do. Now, not, that's not to say that God cannot take the very taste of that thing out of your mouth and completely, you're completely delivered. My sister, she had been a smoker for, I don't know, maybe 20 years. And she wanted God to deliver her from smoking. And when she got delivered from smoking, she was instantly done. Done with cigarettes. It was it never picked up a cigarette since then. I don't know if she's ever had an urge to pick up a cigarette since then, but I know she's never smoked since then. Mm -hmm. So, but she doesn't surround herself with that type of environment. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, um, you got to have somebody that you're accountable to. You got to be accountable. Um, You got to have accountability. You can't just be an island. You can't just think, oh, I'm going to make it on my own and everything is going to be good. You got to have a pastor, a mentor, or a, a a sister, a friend, a brother, somebody that you talk to consistently when you're feeling weak or when you're feeling vulnerable in that area. You've got to have somebody that you can go to. Um, And don't underestimate the enemy. You cannot underestimate the enemy because his devices are tricky, they're they're slick, and they're not cool. So you cannot underestimate your enemy. And finally, these are my points. Finally, do not underestimate the power of God. Mm -hmm. Don't underestimate God. Don't underestimate the enemy, but do not not underestimate God because he is all-powerful, he's all-knowing, and he can do absolutely anything but fail. I like that. We are, we are winners and we are overcomers. And I think a lot of times when we deal with situations, I like what you said, is that 
you need to know who you are yeah. and whose you are. Is that a lot of times it's that I think we don't apply the word of God to our lives. And one thing, when you think about this story, you get a chance to read uh, Chef, Mephibosheth. Mm -hmm. um, when he came into the presence of the king, he was damaged. So it's not pretty. But a lot of times you, what we need to do is we need to take it to God. So we need to take these damaged areas to God. It don't matter. You don't have to be perfect. You can be a liar. You can be whatever. Who cares what the title is? You can be all those things sure. because God knows he formed you. He knew what you were going to do before you even did it. But what he wants you in relationship is just to come before him. And mm -hmm. so how do you do that? I mean, you got to take it to the king, which means you have to have some type of communication which is a prayer life. And and when you talk with the king, you're is is just learning how to pray. Man, if you just like, you know, there's some things that my wife and I need and there's some things that we're going to do this week that we're going to take it to God, but it's just real talk. You know, it's communicating in his presence. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, God, I need a new job, you know, I'm not making enough money, I need a relationship. I want to be married, you know, I want to have children, but now I've had something that I can't have children or I've been damaged in this area. So this person that I love for all these years, you know, cheated on me. All those things you you just have to talk to him mm -hmm. because when you talk to him, you're exposed and you're getting naked before God, you know, yeah. getting naked before the king. And basically what it's doing is that you're admitting your problems and just saying, Hey God, I need you. Yeah. I've done it my way for so long, but now if I can communicate with you, there's a better way that I know that you have for me. And, and basically what prayer does is that it's, uh, it's transferring the burden of life or the damaged area that you are carrying and you're talking and you're basically giving it from you to God. And then, yeah. so what, what I want to have a better relationship with my mom, I want to have a better relationship with my spouse, all these things that you, if you take it to God in prayer, you're taking that burden off you. But the, the, the enemy will say, you don't need a prayer life. You're too busy. You know, you're too damaged or whatever that he speaks to you to get you not to pray. Yeah. Then, or you all right. Yeah. Or you all right. You don't even need to pray, but no, that is a part of being damaged because how can you know what God has for you or know what God's plans for you? You don't talk to him. And then how do you, how can you get rid of all the stuff that life has for you? All the wrongs, only way to give that and transfer that to God is, is, is through prayer. And so, and, and it needs to be daily, you know, mm -hmm. and that's something that I need to improve on. I think we, in certain areas, it, it should be daily because Psalms 34 and 18 says, the Lord is nigh unto them that are broken, yes. you know, so he wants to, he doesn't want anybody that's perfect. If you're perfect, you don't need him. Everybody has a broken area. Absolutely. Or a damaged area in their life. It's, and the Bible also says, asking it shall be given unto you. Seeking you shall find. Knocking the door that will be open. you got to start seeking God. you yeah. got to start getting into his presence. And all these damaged areas that you are experiencing, mm -hmm. God, once you give that to him, he releases it. He's able to work with you. Yeah, and I want to interject too, honey. As you were talking, I was thinking um, a lot of times we think, okay, you know, our marriage is good. Our, our relationship is good. And we don't seek help until it's too late or we don't seek help until there's a problem. But, um, things like this or things like, um, this particular, um, uh, vlog or whatever you want to call it. Um, these things are kind of like vitamins that you take, you know, it's like vitamins that you take, you, you know, you take vitamins when you're healthy, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you don't take medicine unless something's wrong. And now this is also medicine, but it's also vitamin for those that may not feel like they're gotten to a point where they're experiencing, or you may not even know you were experiencing it yet. You may have not gotten that revelation because I've been through things in my marriage and I had no idea I was going through it. They had been going through it for a while and didn't realize it until much later. Hmm. But you know, that being said, you know, take this medicine, share this medicine, share this, um, uh, this vitamin, I should say with, even with those, um, that, may not feel like they have, they're having an issue, or you may not be married just yet, or you may want to get married, or you may used to be married and may want to get married again. It's a good way to learn how to deal, uh, have a relationship and have a relationship with God. Right. And like I like we said last week in that, uh, damaged goods part one, there's, uh, everybody has an area that you're damaged in. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, that's life. Yeah. And, and it happens. And like we said before, is that, you know, God wants to heal those damaged areas and he's, and he's able to do it. But a lot of times we get damaged again in the same areas because we took it to God. And we're like, man, I, I prayed. God delivered me and I, I'm healed. You know, I went through, I had that breakthrough. But why did I get damaged in the same area again? Why did I fall back into it? It's because you did not believe what God said mm. you are or who you are. Because not only, you know, you didn't believe what God says because you talked to him, but then you had no wording. Mm. You didn't ever open up the book, the Bible to see what God says about you. And then if you look at the story of, of Chef, the reason why I like the story is because what did, what did, the, what did David do as soon as a Chef got into his presence? He blessed him. Yeah, blessed he him. said, hey. You don't have to fear me. Right. I ain't going to hurt you. I'm not going to kill you, but I'm going to give you three things. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to show you kindness. I'm going to restore you. And then you're always going to sit in my presence. Yep. So he did and four things. Didn't even acknowledge that he was did, broken. Didn't acknowledge that he was <laughs> broken or anything, but he said, I'm going to bless you. But what happens with us is that when we sin or when we fall or when we make a mistake, we don't want to even go to God yep. and get in his presence. So... When you get in his presence, he's not going to do anything but those four things. He's going to restore you. He's going to bless you. He's going to show you kindness. And then he's going to establish you and, and make you sit in his presence. But you can't get that way if, if you don't open the book to know what. Because if you think after David said all those things, Chef said, Mephibosheth said the thing that we all do because we still have that load of bar in us. He said, wait a minute. I'm not that. I'm a dog. I'm not worthy. I'm not, I'm not, I can't be what you just said. I can't even receive that. It's because his mindset was not of that because he didn't know who he was. He still had that loader bar in him, that place of shame. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, if you don't read the word of God, you're going to think that you are a dog. You're going to think that you are low. You're going to experience everything that the enemy says you are because you don't have that word in you. Mm -hmm. Because that word is not just is revelate. Because a lot, 95% of the time when I read the King James Version of the Bible, I have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I don't get no revelation. You know, so whatever version that you need to read to yeah, understand it, sure. read it. Because it's not revelatory knowledge. It's getting an anchor. It's saying that, you know what? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So when the devil says that I'm not, I at least have that anchor. I'm not going to be blown with the wind. Absolutely. I'm not going to be blown to and fro because I have some word in me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to believe the promises of God because, you know, what happens is that we're damaged in certain areas because our perspective of ourselves is mm -hmm. broken. Mm -hmm. And so how can we have damaged control if we don't know who we are? If you are dealing with shame, if you're dealing with regret, if you're re dealing with um, comparison, or if you're con dealing with condemnation, if you're having trouble in all those areas, it's because your mentality is that of that dead dog mentality. When God says you are fearfully, wonderfully made, and that you are, you know, that I, you, I will restore all those things. I will restore all the things that the canker worm, all those things have taken away from you because I have promises. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a relationship with God. You have to have communication with God to have damaged control yeah. and restore the areas in your life that are broken. Absolutely. I, I mean, I 100% agree. And I believe that if you have that pliability and you have that relationship with God, um, it helps you to have that relationship with your spouse. It helps you to have that love. It helps you to have that tenderness. It helps you to understand the concept of forgiveness. It under helps you to have that concept of patience. All of the virtues that we need, uh, that meekness, that tenderness, all of those, the, the fruit of the spirit that we need um, to be good Christians, it makes us good spouses. Right. And when we have that, um, and we understand that because I know my husband a lot of times, sometimes I'll just be like, rawr. And he's like, why is she roaring? <laughs> why is she being rawr? And he has so much patience with me. He doesn't roar back, you know, immediately. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't do that. Hey there. He doesn't, um, you know, do that um, uh, immediately. He just has patience and uh, waits it out because he knows, number one, I'm the type of person that would be like, you know what? I was just really upset about whatever, blah, 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 or, you know, whatever the kind of thing is. He'll say, 
you know, I, I'll eventually come back and I'm, t I'm going to tell them what was going on with me mm -hmm. and then we'll discuss it and then we'll move on. And, um, you know what I'm saying? But that's being real and that's really understanding, uh, the fruit of the spirit. That's really understanding, uh, relationship with God, because when you have a relationship that is vertical, then you can have a horizontal relationship. Mm -hmm. You can't have a good horizontal if you don't have no vertical because right. you don't even understand how to understand that person. Right. right. And no matter if you're married or if you're single, you know, we used to teach our kids when, we, when they were young to know, we used to say, know who you are and know whose you are. Right. You know, you have to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you are head and not to tell, that you are above only and not beneath. You need to know these things so that you can meet life's challenges by knowing who, who God says you are. And the only way that you know who God says you are is to open up the book and read his word. That's right. You know you're and, an overcomer when yeah, you read that book. You are. And your marriage, your relationship, no matter where you are in your relationship, in your marriage today, or even in your uh, relationship as, uh, you know, you want to be married or used to be married or, or a relationship with family members, you are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. So whatever it is, you can overcome that. Your team is going to win. You are an overcomer. Your marriage is going to win. God, because you're listening, because you're hearing this, because you somebody shared this with you, you're going to win. God has winning. It's your winning season. Yeah. It's your time to win. Yeah, yeah. So God wants to get that load of bar out of you. He wants to get that shame out of you. Mm -hmm. He wants to get the disappointment out of you. He wants to get the 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 hurt out of you. All those things that that caused you to hide. All those things that when you look at somebody, you want to be covetous. You want to have all those things because you were damaged. You you weren't able to appreciate the, what God has for you. But just remember, when He pulls those out of you, you have to put something in you so that you don't go back. That's to right. little bar, and that's something in you is his presence, is his love, is his. You got to replace it with the relationship. If you want, if you're looking for a new job, if you're looking for a better relationship, if you're looking for more communication, anything, if you're looking for restoration of things, when you let God replace that little bar mentality with his love and with his presence, then you're able to not now you're able to have something in you where you, you know who you are mm -hmm. and you know whose you are. And that's what we were just challenging you today, to be encouraged, know God loves you, that there is success for the broken areas in our lives. We all experience those things. We are all broken. But when we when we find out like what Chef did, um, that it doesn't matter what somebody else says about us. It doesn't even matter that if they get our stuff. Because what I like most about Mephibosheth, <laughs> did I say it right finally, you did, you did. is that even when David was going to restore him, and the last part of that, the guy that lied, Ziba, he got some of the chef's stuff. Mm -hmm. He got it, and then David even, David even said for Ziba to divide it, mm -hmm. you know. But the mentality of chef had changed because now he was like, you know what, that don't matter because no matter all the stuff that I lost, all the stuff he can have it. Because as long as I'm in your presence, as as in your presence <laughs> then all, all my stuff, you. right, all my stuff is covered. Because he's still broken. He some area that he that damaged area is going to stay with him for the rest of his life. But when he's in the presence of the king, it's covered. It's covered. And then the king that gave you what this guy stole, if he took it, so what? Because now you're back in the presence, and he has cattle, among, thousands of cattle on the hill. He can give you much more. Than the enemy story. And just like Ziva, don't think nobody gonna just ride off into the sunset with oh. your stuff because he couldn't maintain it. He lost it all. And he lost his legacy because he originally had the legacy that his house would be blessed and he would serve Mephibosheth for the rest of forever, serve his house forever. So he had job security. But of course, because he lied and he tried got things that in the wrong way, that he was not able to maintain it and he lost his legacy and he ended up losing everything. Yeah. So, um, you know, don't worry. Like the Bible says, you know, don't fret not thyself because of evildoers. If somebody has done something and they've gotten something or they've done something to you, um, you know, don't worry about that because the Bible says soon they'll be suddenly cut off. They'll be cut off. So mm -hmm. don't worry about them. Just worry about um, getting it into the place where God wants you to be and getting to the place of uh, covering and the place of healing where God wants you to be. And he will bless your relationship, bless your marriage, um, and you'll be so much better for it. You'll be so much better for it because I know, you know, there's things in my life that God covered me. 
mistakes that I made and he covered me. I got into his words and he covered me. But when you get from, when you push back from that table, you move back from the table, then you're exposed. Mm -hmm. You out there, you out there for whoever to see, oh, this is who you are. This is what happened to you. So don't push back from the table, but stay close, stay at the table, stay in the presence of the King and you know, your marriage and your life and your love will be so blessed. Definitely. So we appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you turning in. Keep following us on Facebook. We are at WhatsApp Entertainment on Facebook. We're at WhatsApp Entertainment on Instagram. And uh, we got some stuff coming up. And each and every week, we want to try to engage. Send us, DM us. Tell us what you'd like to, to talk about or any questions about marriage and relationships. But please go back and watch this video again. It's also on YouTube at WhatsApp Video. Yeah. So share it with all your friends and family. Be if you think this will bless somebody, like it, absolutely. Uh, like it and, uh, we'll comment on it. Comment, yeah. Still, yeah. We answer every comment. We yeah. love seeing you guys. You know, we see you check on and everything. Hopefully, it's turned the right way and you guys were able to view it great. But we'll see, we'll see you guys next week at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Yep. For love in 60 seconds. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a great evening. Good night, everybody. Bye.